in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create some electric effects. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. And in this tutorial, we're going to go a little bit crazy with the effects here. Just kind of show the multiple ways that we can use this effect. Uh, you will be able to use this for text or for logos. And you'll be able to change this out a little bit later. But in this tutorial is really going to be able just to show you guys how we can use these effects. So, so I already have some text in my composition here. You can use a logo. It doesn't really matter. But the first thing I suggest doing is whatever you have in here, go up to Layer, Pre-Compose. And name this one placeholder so you'll be able to easily swap out objects a little bit later after you're done setting this up and hit okay so now that we have this in here we can start creating some effects so let's go ahead and grab like the rectangle tool and let's draw out like a nice rectangle all the way across like this and my palette is gonna be like blue yellow and orange uh, I'll just go with you know orange for this one click okay and I'm also using a stroke of 10 and what we need to do is go to the shape layer here, go to add, and we need to add a trim pass effect, which is probably my most favorite uh, effector inside of After Effects. And what we're going to do is set the start to 100% and add a keyframe for start. Go forward by like a second or so, maybe like a second and a half, and set the start to 0%. And then go halfway through this effect and add a keyframe for end and go to maybe like two seconds or so and set the end percentage down to 0%. So now we have this nice stroke in here that kind of animates on like that. Of course, you can always offset how you guys want this to come on at. So that's always pretty cool. And of course, we'll come in here, maybe just hit F9 on our keyboard to make all these keyframes easy, easy keyframes. And we'll come here, rename this layer to uh, Rectangle. Then we'll go up to Effect, Distort, Turbulent, Displace. And this is where this effect is going to live. So we'll come in here and we'll change the amount here, maybe lower it by a touch. And then go to the size and decrease that by a little bit as well. And then we'll go to the clump. And then we'll go to the complexity, and this is where this effect lives. So we maybe we'll set the complexity down to five. And of course, if we increase this a little bit more, it gets a little bit more crazy. Uh, but we're going to really get that, you know, electric feel to it. So maybe like 6.5-ish. And what I like to play with is the displacement. So right now, set the turbulent. I like turbulent smoother. I also like for this one, uh, cross displacement. You get some really cool effects. I, I think it's really cool. So go ahead and experiment with the displacement. And then what we need to do is alt-click the evolution. And we need to come in here to the expression and type in time uh, asterisk like 150. And I'll zoom in here real fast so you guys can see what I'm doing. So time asterisk 150. And that'd be okay. So now I'll have a little bit of, you know, evolution to it. It'll animate a little bit uh, on top of the trim paths. And then what we can do is make sure the rectangle is selected. Go up to effect, stylize, and we'll add the glow effect. And we can come here, maybe increase the threshold by a touch, maybe the radius as well and you know maybe the, the intensity I, I like going ahead and adjusting all three of these properties and a little before and after you know very subtle but looks cool so we can go crazy with the electrical effects on shape layers and you can animate these in and out but you guys know how to do this now so let's go ahead and do this for our text or logo depending on what you're using so we'll go here to the placeholder and if you're using a logo make sure the logo is selected and you might want to go to layer auto trace and trace that out or you can go to Illustrator if you have the AI file and copy the path inside of After Effects. But for this one, I'm just going to focus on text. And if you just have text, you can right click the text layer and you can click on Create Mask from Text. And with this layer selected, just come in here, just copy this, the outline text, delete it from here, and we'll paste it over onto the tutorial comp. So this is kind of a destructive workflow, meaning that you could you would have to re-outline this and reapply the effects later if you wanted to change the text. But it's not that much extra work if you had to do that. So what we're going to do is go up to Effect, Generate Stroke. And that's with the outline selected here. And we're going to set this to All Mask. And we're going to turn off the stroke sequentially. And I can barely say that word, but you know what I'm talking about. And we're going to come here and change the color of this to, you know, whatever color we want. Maybe we'll do like a, a light blue for this one. And that's looking good. And then we'll go to On Original Image and Reveal Original Image down here. So now we have this outline here. We'll set the brush hardness to 100%. Then let's add a keyframe for the start here. And I'll just bring up the keyframes by hitting U on my keyboard. And we'll go here and set the start to 0%. And we'll move forward in time to like two seconds almost and set the start to 100%. Go to the middle here between these two keyframes. Add a keyframe for end. And we'll go to like two and a half seconds for here as well. And We'll just set this to 100% for the end, and we'll hit you on the keyboard to bring up the keyframes, and we kind of see what we got here. So we're kind of getting like these very thin outlines of our text, and you know, that looks pretty cool. And of course, you can apply this right to 
your actual logo layer as well. Like I said, if you outlined it correctly, you should be okay. And let's go ahead and set the paint style to on transparent. That's what I meant to do. And sometimes, uh, you know, we mess up as well. So it's all good here. So let's continue with this. So now we have this nice stroke effect and then let's go to the rectangle layer and let's copy the uh, turbulent displays and the glow, copy it and we'll paste it right here into this layer. And now we'll kind of have some crazy stuff going on here, which is not really what we want. We want to be able to make out the outline of the text at least. So let's go ahead and bring down the size to like five or so. And we kind of see what we're doing. Maybe I'll do like three so we can kind of see a little bit more. And then you know maybe increase the amount by a touch more. And then let's set the cross displacement to maybe turbulent smoother. And that should be just fine. And now we kind of have this turbulent effect on here and it all looks good. And then maybe we'll increase the complexity to like eight or so. and you know, that should be fine. And now we have our first variation of this effect. And what we can do is duplicate this effect and offset the uh, layer by just a few frames, not much, and change the color of this to, you know, a secondary color. Maybe we'll just use yellow. And now you can see we're kind of blending colors here together. It looks really nice. And we'll duplicate it once more, the layer here, and we'll just offset it by a couple more frames. And we'll set this color to an orange or whatever uh, color works for you and click OK. So now we have this very nice kind of outline. So let's go ahead and talk about the shape layers once more. Let's go to a rectangle here and let's duplicate it. And let's go into the shape layer properties here that go in the contents, delete the rectangle one, go just click on the word contents and go to our tools up here and let's go to the ellipse tool. And what I want to do is kind of create an entire electrical sort of sweep across our text that kind of, you know, circles about. So what we're going to do is come here, hold down shift on our keyboard to draw out a perfect uh, circle. And we'll just draw about a circle about that size and we'll put it right on top of our text. Uh, maybe we'll actually go into here and, you know, maybe scale this down by a touch so it's not as big. And that should be cool. So basically, since we already set up the trim pass effect, we don't actually have to recreate anything. We can just come here, delete the rectangle and, you know, put in new shapes. I should have told you guys that before. But we want this to come on right once our text starts generating on. So we'll have this come on right here, right when our text first generates on. And then we'll come here, rename this layer to like circle. And then we'll come here, duplicate this layer, offset it by just a couple of frames. And we're just going to come here and basically take all these duplicates and spread it across the entire length of the text. Remember to offset each of these layers just by a few more frames. Kind of see what I'm doing right here. Kind of creating like a staircase. And this way we'll be able to cover up our entire text or even logo, depending on what you're doing. Um, and it should be good. And we'll do one more at the end here. Oh, and I forgot to offset these. And we'll grab this one and offset that. And I might even go as far as to kind of move these back even more since I think that's, you know, a one frame difference is not that big of a deal. So maybe I'll bring them back each by just a few, like three frames or four frames or so. And of course, we can select all these circle layers and maybe change the uh, color to yellow or something uh, just so it's not 100% blending in with everything. Also, what I suggest doing is go back to the outlines over here, duplicate this effect, bring it to the bottom, set the show color back to white and delete the turbulent displace and glow. This way we'll kind of have like a solid color underneath our actual layers here. So it'll look a little bit more sturdy, I guess. I like that. And now we're getting a little bit crazy with effects. And let's just do one more variation of the electrical effect where you don't actually have to do much work. It's replaceable. It's not destructive. And it all begins with our placeholder down here. So let's go back to our actual placeholder over here. Let's turn our text back on since I turned it off before. And now we see our text in here. So we want to be able to transition this text on. So first things first, go to effect, stylize. And I'm going to use the CC burn film effect. And I love this effect. You know, not a lot of people use it, but I love it. Um, and what's cool about it, it actually seems like something's burning on. So for the, in this case, I think that kind of makes sense, maybe. But let's go ahead and add the keyframe for the burn effect here. And we'll set this to 100. And we'll go forward in time, maybe by like a couple of seconds here, and set this down to zero. So it'll kind of be burning in over time. And I think that looks, you know, it's going to be pretty interesting. So if I come here to like the middle point here, let my computer load. And as you can see, it looks like it's almost burning on. And it just looks really cool. I like it. All right, so what we need to do is duplicate our placeholder layer, delete the uh, film effect over here, bring this layer to the bottom, and maybe we'll come here, just bring the end point by a little bit so we know where this effect is going to start. You know, and then we'll come over and just copy like a turbulent displace and a glow effect, paste it on top of our actual layer here. And now we kind of have this. And maybe we'll definitely bring down the glow radius maybe to like 30 or so. That's, that's a little bit intense. And that might still be a bit intense, but we'll come back to it later. Let's go to effect, generate fill. 
And let's set this to like orange or something. And that should be okay. And I'll turn off our main placeholder here so we see what we're doing. And what I want to do is just transition this on. So let's go and grab the rectangle tool. Make sure the placeholder is selected. And we'll just draw out like a thin, you know, rectangle that goes across our entire comp like this. And that's looking pretty good. Then we'll go to the mask one here. Add a keyframe for the mask path. Go forward by another second or so. And what we're going to do is just take this entire box and flip it to the other side of our composition just like this. So what's going to happen is we just created like a nice transition here. So whatever this box, you know, is on top of, we're going to be able to see the actual, you know, meat of our glow effect or sorry, the uh, electricity effect just like this taking the form of our text. And that's pretty interesting. And once again, we can come here, duplicate it, offset it by just a couple of frames, change the color of this to maybe like blue, you know, grab our secondary color. I mean, I don't even know what my secondary color is and what order we're doing this in, but it doesn't really matter. And I'll come here, duplicate it once some more and I'll say by a couple of frames and we'll set this color back to yellow or orange. I don't even know. Yeah, orange. And it's not offset it by way too much. We just want to offset it by a touch and that should be good. And then of course we can turn on our placeholder and this will kind of burn right through our effect. Of course we can offset this by a touch if you don't like the timing of this. And if I scrub through here real fast, I'll show you guys what this will kind of look like. It'll kind of and as you see, this will kind of light up our text from the left side to the right side. Just another element in this, you know, sort of glowing electrical effects. All right. And then, of course, you know, you can turn on motion blur for everything and turn it on the top and then go ahead and render this out and see what we'll have. And after a render, this is what we have. And I think it's a nice collage of electrical effects. So I hope you guys took away a few things from this tutorial. And if you guys enjoyed the tutorial, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.